Okay, so we did needs assessment last time, and now what we're going to be looking at is the planning section. So in a community program, the first step is doing a needs assessment. The second step is doing the planning. So let's look at how we would work on uh, making a plan for your community presentation. I want to highlight this guy over here whose name is Dr. Benjamin Bloom, and what he's famous for is creating a taxonomy. And a taxonomy is like basically a classification system or a hierarchy of educational objectives. And so what he did was he created Bloom's taxonomy. And what he said was, um, when you create an objective, which is what we're going to be learning about today, you could use an objective from the low end of the pyramid, which is something very simple, like remembering something, or you could even go up higher and create and use a higher word such as create when you're use when you're coming up with an objective you could use a simple verb or you could use a verb that is a little more complex and involves um, the students to do a lot more to meet your objective so we're going to look at that but what bloom's taxonomy is is that they created a list or a hierarchy of verbs and he has some extra words over here that you can use. These are all verbs that you can use to formulate your objectives. And what is interesting to note is that these verbs over here are very simple. Define, list, memorize. Compare that to these words over here. Design, assemble, formulate, develop. The, these ones are more complex. When you're in semester one for the dental hygiene program, and if you look at your course syllabus and course outlines, you'll notice that the verbs that were used were more in the lower end of the pyramid. And as you progress to semester two, three, four, five, and even semester six, now you'll notice that the verbs that are or the, in the objectives, the verbs that are uh, posted in your course syllabus is a lot more complex because by now you have understood how to do all this. And now when we test you, we want you to be up there in the pyramid. So when we're looking at the Bloom's taxonomy, there are three domains that um, are important to know. And there is a video that I really want you guys to watch that highlight the three domains. Basically, there's a cognitive domain, an affective domain, and a psychomotor domain. Cognitive is when you're just learning stuff. So if you're reading from a textbook and grasping that knowledge, that is considered cognitive. Effective is when emotions come in hand, and I'll give you an example later on. So anytime you have feelings, you have emotions, you have values and beliefs that all fall under the effective domain. And psychomotor is when you are doing something. So when you're learning how to build a shed, when you're learning how to scale, when you're learning how to hold your instruments for debridement, that is psychomotor because you're doing something, you're using your hands. So your objectives, when you create objectives for your community presentation, your objectives could fall under the cognitive domain, it could fall under the effective domain, or it could fall under your psychomotor domain. So something to think about, if you are teaching your students how to brush, how to brush their teeth physically, do you think it would be best under a cognitive domain, effective domain, or psychomotor domain? So if you said psychomotor, you are correct because brushing involves them using their hands. So anytime they're using their hands to physically do something, it is psychomotor. It could also be cognitive because you want them to understand the importance of brushing and um, cognitive looks at that when they're processing why we should be brushing and the importance of brushing. But more importantly, because we want them to actually physically do it or know how to do it, it is considered a psychomotor type of learning domain. So again, here is a different uh, way of showing the different um, cognitive domains. So we start off with something very simple, such as remember, and we work our way up higher, so we evaluate and create. If you look at the assignment we're doing right now, which is a community presentation, you're actually physically creating it, right? You're, you're actually going hands on and creating that community presentation. In semester one, we won't ask you to do that because in semester one, you're just learning the important concepts about uh, brushing, flossing, and anything dental related. Now that you know everything, we're asking you to go higher in the uh, pyramid and start creating and evaluating and analyzing.
What's interesting to note is that they did change the, their Bloom's taxonomy, so it has been revised, and you can see instead of evaluation, um, it's now pushed to the bottom slightly, and now there's creating. So they did change some words from knowledge and went to remembering, comprehension and went to understanding. So in 2001 and 2002, they did modify this slightly. Now let's look at the effective domain. So as we said, the effective domain is when feelings, when emotions are involved. So, for example, it, sorry, and what I should say is that this, again, is a hierarchy, and it should actually go down this way. So this is the basic, and this is the most complex. And I can explain this to you by saying something like, um, if you were taught how to be kind, Okay, that's if someone t just tells you that it's important to be kind and you receive that information that is receiving someone's just telling you you know be kind to others responding is when you are what it says here is active attention by student which further reinforces learning in other words when you are starting to um, respond to that person or ask questions about why is it important to be kind um, you know how can i be kind that that now you're taking it one step further so receiving is just under someone's telling you that, you know, be kind and you're receiving that information, responding, okay, now you're processing it and you're trying to understand why it's important to be kind, valuing. So now you have that value. That value is now ingrained in you in that you know how important it is to be kind and respectful to others. Organizing, this is when you may have several values within you and you're organizing the values. Is it more important for you to be kind? Is it more important for you to be, you know, judgmental towards others? What's important to you? What's not important to you? So you're organizing your values within yourself. And then characterizing, this is where it is built within you. It, it's built in you to be kind and respectful to others. So when you have developed it completely, when that has attached to you, um, that belief has attached to you completely, then that is characterizing. So here you're just taught to be kind or told rather to be kind. And now you fully believe that it's so important to be kind and you um, incorporate it in your day to day life. Lastly, we're going to look at the psychomotor domain. And as we said, psychomotor domain is when we use our motor skills. So when we're physically doing something. And as we said in dental hygiene, the psychomotor domain would refer to the doing or the or the learning of how to do, um, how to hold an instrument, how to activate an instrument, how to properly de deprive someone's mouth. It could even be how to polish. It could even be how to use fluoride. So anything that you're physically doing in clinic involves psychomotor domain. So let's look at these over here. When we're looking at these three pictures, I want you to think about whether they fall under the cognitive domain, the affective domain, and psychomotor domain. So this guy over here who's kicking the soccer ball, if you said psychomotor, you would be correct because he's physically doing something. He's physically kicking the ball. And at some point in time, he was taught how to physically kick the ball. So that is a psychomotor um, domain. When we're looking at the brain, anytime you think of the brain, think of cognitive because you're processing information that's cognitive. Lastly, when you're looking at this baby and you feel, you know, happy and you have emotions running to you, that is affective domain.